welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very, very special video. I am interviewing one of my favorite lenders. Her name is Laura Rivera. She's going to come on today and tell us about assumable mortgages. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I put out different ways that you can save money in the home buying process. And this is going to be a great way for buyers to save so much in interest, especially when interest rates being just under 7% is where they currently are right now. This could be a great way to get into your new home much more affordably. Okay, so we have Laura here. I'm so happy and so thankful that she came on to talk about assumable mortgages because you know, like I said, I love to save people money and think of just different strategies to get people in homes at a more affordable price or affordable way to get them into their next or first home. Laura is with Fairway Independent Mortgage and I'm gonna let her kind of introduce herself and talk about um, her experience in the loan industry. Just Hi, everyone. Thank you, Brianna, again, for having me today. I am honored to be here. Um, and again, my name is Laura Rivera. I am a mortgage advisor with Fairway Independent Mortgage. Um, I have been in the mortgage industry since 2008. Um, so I've seen a lot of changes in the industry, um, the good, the bad. Um, but it's all good because we always make it work um, and we're always looking for ways to strategize to make home possible, um, home ownership possible. And so today I did want to give some information regarding VA Assumable Loan. And VA Assumable Loans is basically a home loan where you can benefit from the loan terms of the current owner of the home and what they have. So if they refinance, let's say in 2020, when rates were in the twos or threes, you would basically take over that interest rate and the balance that they have. That is a huge savings, especially right now where we are seeing interest rates um, are in the sixes. So if you're able to take advantage and assume a loan, that is definitely a great opportunity um, for you to have that savings and maybe keep that loan forever. Um, or eventually, you know, anything can happen where you rent it out and you have a great set of rental income as well. Um, so definitely a good way of being able to save during times where interest rates are higher. So, okay. So say you were, you're on the sell side and somebody wants to buy a house that your, your company has financed a mortgage for, do they have to go with you? Do they have to go, can they pick their own lender or do they have to go with the seller's lender? So VA assumable loans work a little different. Mm -hmm. um, the seller does have to get approval from their current lender to be able to offer this. So they have to get approval from them and go through the process of finding out. So if you are a veteran or you have a VA loan right now and you maybe want to make this a way to offer as a benefit to buyers, find out from your current lender what steps or process is needed in order to get the okay from them to go through that process. Um, as a buyer on that side, unfortunately, you don't get to select the lender. You would be using the seller's lender for the process. Um, so you would go through their steps to determine your credit worthiness to be able to assume the loan. Okay. So I have not done um, a loan that was assumable um, at all. And this is actually, I haven't heard about it until just this year. And maybe because of rates, you know, kind of where they were before it wasn't really that popular. So now it's becoming more of a thing where people are talking about it. Um, but yeah, so I don't have firsthand experience with it. And that's another reason why I have Laura on here to uh, talk more about it. I kind of understand the logistics of it, but I don't have like that firsthand experience with going through a transaction where the buyer is getting into an assumable loan. Does it take any longer to close a loan um, using a, 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 an assumable mortgage or is it about the same, like 30, 40 days? Yeah, unfortunately, it does take longer. Um, so from what I am gathering, it can take around 45 days or more. Okay. Um, so it just depends on that lender of who is currently holding the mortgage and what their process is. So um, as a seller, you can find out, hey, if I find a buyer, what would the timeline look like? Like, especially right now during the holidays, are you looking at more, you know, of a lengthy process? Because you'll want to share that with buyers too, right? Are they flexible enough or do you want to wait to find someone who's flexible enough um, to wait whatever period that they're operating on? Um, so you will see that, unfortunately, on a standard VA loan, you're looking at less than 30 days for closing. And on an assumable, you're probably looking at 45 plus. 
Okay. But this could be, I think this could be a good opportunity for those homes that are kind of have been sitting on the market a little bit longer and a buyer that's pretty patient. This would be like a perfect kind of situation, you know, if, as long as everyone is eligible, of course, um, to get into a home for uh, a really, a really good interest rate. Okay. So here's a simple question. Simple. That's a simple. <laughs> so here's a simple question. How do you find out as a seller? How do you find out if your mortgage is assumable? So that would be contacting your current lender that is holding your mortgage. So as a seller, you want to go ahead and give them a call, let them know you're considering selling your home and you would like to make this an option for buyers. What will it take for me to be able to make that possible? Um, and then they can determine whether you would be eligible to be able to offer an assumable loan to others. Um, and then keep in mind, uh, there's other questions you may want to ask as well, um, because for an VA assumable loan, the buyer doesn't have to be a veteran either. So it could be someone who is not a veteran. What would that entail? Do you lose your VA entitlement because you know you're still having that money tied up with this property by doing so? But maybe you're okay with doing that. So making sure you're asking all of those additional questions is important as well. Okay, so if you're a VA seller and you make your loan assumable to someone who's not a VA buyer, then you could possibly lose your VA benefits. It'll be tied up. Correct. In okay. Right. And that then, portion is going to be tied up and, and held with that property. Okay. So say if it was VA seller to VA buyer, is there any difference there or? So that is where you can have the VA buyer move over that entitlement onto theirs okay. instead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, is it only VA mortgages that are, is it only VA mortgages that are assumable or? No, nope, you could do that on FHA as well. FHA as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> They're pretty simple loans. I will say like, as far as, um, you know, going through the process, it's not as, okay, how many options do I have as, you know, a buyer who's not looking to assume a loan, assume a loan. So mm -hmm. this is going to be more straightforward where you're only working directly with that um, seller's lender um, mm -hmm. and then just having to go through their process. So it's not, too much, you know, other key things that I would say to be aware of that you're going to assume any debt with that, with that loan. So if it's not just the balance of what's owed, but also uh, what is held in escrow, you're going to have to take over that escrow balance as well. So keep that in mind as far as costs go. Um, the other key component with VA assumable loans is if let's say the property is worth 500,000, that's the sales price, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the balance is 450. There is a $50,000 gap that has to be covered by the buyer in cash. So that's the other key piece is that you're not able to just assume the sales price. You can only assume the loan and that's the balance that is owed. So you're going to have to keep that in mind that especially now with prices having increased, are you able to cover that difference? If you are already planning on a down payment because maybe you just recently sold another home, then that might work out just perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, or you already had some you know, reserves that you were considering to put down. So that's another key component to keep in mind that it does require you to cover any difference between the sales price and the loan balance or you know, any escrow as well that's held with the mortgage. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So if you... Say if you are selling a house and you know you're profiting two hundred thousand, but you want to make sure you have a small interest rate or you have the capital saved up already to make that difference. Or say the seller um, just recently purchased, and um, I have someone who um, wants to sell, and when I put it on the market, I'm going to let them know that you know, well, I want to market that their loan is also assumable. Um, but yeah, and they don't have that much difference between maybe like 20,000, which could be a lot for some people, which could be not a whole lot for others. Um, is, is USDA also assumable? Can, can a USDA loan also be assumable? Yes, it can. So government loans, so USDA would fall under that as well. Okay. So if you were to, let's say, assume a USDA loan, instead of putting down money, you can put make up for that difference between the sales price and uh, what they what they have left. Correct. All right. Okay. Um, now our team is also trying to see if there is a possibility of opening up a program that helps cover that difference because usually a second loan 
um, wasn't possible before. So we are exploring that option for VA assumable loans. So mm -hmm. as soon as that becomes available, I will let you know. So that way, if we have someone who doesn't have the funds to cover the difference, this would be another option to still benefit from obtaining that lower interest rate, you know, original loan, assuming it and being able to cover the difference. So stay tuned for that. Okay, that's excellent. So I have a few buyers who have been now priced out of the market because of the interest rates are so high. Say the house is 200000 and they could qualify back in April, but now they can't qualify. If they were to get a loan that's assumable at that 4% interest rate and they would be able to qualify, how would they be able to show that? Or would they have to qualify at the current market rates? So if they were pre-approved before with, let's say, if their listing shows that it can be an assumable loan, mm -hmm. um, they can find out exactly what rate terms are on that mortgage. And if they knew that they were pre-approved before for X interest rate at that point and it's lower, then they would qualify, you know, as long as nothing else has changed, they would qualify for that assumable loan. So they could speak with that um, seller's lender to get started to make sure they meet all of their requirements. So as long as they've been pre-approved before, then they should be just fine to qualify um, and apply for that assumable loan. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So it's kind of almost they're getting qualified for that specific house almost. Exactly. They would be okay. specifically qualifying for that home. Okay. Okay. Well, I think I've picked your brain enough, Laura. <laughs> uh, thank you so much again for coming on today and talking to us about this very specific topic. Um, and I hope you come back again sometime. Definitely. Um, thank you. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and subscribe to the video. Um, I'm also going to put down below Laura's information on how you can contact her, Instagram, email, all that good stuff. And um, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thanks again, Laura. Thank you.